TII Technical Education Systems, Teaching Technology for Tomorrow. In this video, we're going to show how to create a start-stop station, oftentimes referred as a latching circuit, using a normally open push button and a normally closed push button in the Siemens TIAV13 program. Now to do this, we've already run through all of the setups that we've talked about in a different video. We've connected the computer to the PLC. Um, we've even created the tags that we're going to use. You can see here in the show all tags folder that I went ahead and created the tags already that we showed you in a previous unit. We have left green push button, red green push button, left red light, right led right, memory bit. We'll see which ones of these we use if we have to create one on the way no problem. So I'll close this window out here. Now what I want to do on my network one, and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do this. We're going to grab a normally open contact and drag it down to the circuit. Now I'm going to tag this. I'm going to make this my start button. All right. Or I guess I would call this my left green push button. All right. Hit enter. And you can see that's already tagged to the input that I want to use. Now I want to put memory around that. So as you saw when we were doing the parallel circuits, we come over here, select open branch. We're going to grab what's going to end up being our memory contact. Drag this over to here. And we will wait to identify this or tag it later. So now what we want to do is we want to set up the stop button. Now the stop button is typically a normally closed push button. So since it's normally closed I can use what is called here a normally open contact. What we're doing is we're going to reverse that and it's weird because usually you think of a normally closed push button as having a symbol like this but since the the stop button is already normally closed this will always be activated because a stop button allow is contacted or allows continuity when it's not being activated so I'll come here we're going to identify this as our um, left red push button here hit enter and we could call that stop button. We could identify it any way we want, but we just want to make it a little easier to identify here. Then we want to put our output in. Now, for our output, what we want to do is I want to tag this first to just a general output. Okay, so let's go ahead and go left, red light. You can see how that will tag it to output zero. Now for the memory circuit here, I will actually use this tag name. What we want to do is just come over to here. I'm going to come over to our memory contact and just type in the name. Left green or left red light, sorry. We hit enter. Now you see these two have the exact same address. So now we've created a latching circuit, sometimes referred to as a start-stop station, um, sometimes referred to as a memory circuit, however you want to identify it. These are extremely common and very, very useful. And this is the most simplistic way to set it up. So let's go ahead and download this to the controller and we'll show you how this works not only on the screen but on the TII Trainer um, Programmable Logic Siemens HMI PLC Trainer. So now that we're downloaded and we have turned the monitor function on for this program, which if you have not watched our previous programs, you can go back and watch the videos that show how to do that. You can see here that we're activated and you can see a couple of things I want to point out before we start. The left green push button, which is normally clo open, does not is not green through, but the red button which is normally closed, the left red button, which is normally closed, is highlighted on both ends. So, what we want to do here is 
we want to monitor the screen while we watch what's happening on the TII trainer. So I'm going to come to the TII trainer and I'm going to activate the green button. This went green for a second. Continuity was allowed to flow to the red light, which is now on. And since this is activated, it allows logical continuity to flow through the memory contact. Okay, now electricity is allowed to flow through here. This is activated. If I want to stop it, I have to cut off logical continuity, which is by activating the red button here. You will see this go from green to blue. This is what we refer to as a start stop station. So I can start the circuit, whatever it is, let it be a conveyor, a fan, a cylinder, and it will stay active even though my hands are free. When I'm ready to stop it, I activate the stop button right here. That shuts it off. I walk away and it stays shut down. These are very common circuits. This idea of latching something on so you can walk away is used in almost every industrial electrical circuit out there. It is extremely, extremely common. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go offline and show you a couple of other ways you can do this and uh, program the same thing using internal memory tags. So now what I want to do is I'm going to actually just move a couple of things around here on the screen. So I have my network 2 here. I'm going to drag this output and drop it here. I'm going to come up here and add a new output right here. And I'm going to um, identify this as oops, memory bit, which is a tag that I've already created. You can identify it as internal memory. You can identify it really with any name that you want to create. Now that that's created, I want to modify this to mirror it. Now one of the common mistakes that people will make, especially if they're modifying the circuit, is they forget to change the memory circuits that are associated with the output tag. Very common mistake, easily correctable, but it's just slightly frustrating. Now what you see here is um, the start button and the stop button now control an internal memory bit which doesn't actually turn anything on out in the field. So what we'll do here is I'm going to uh, create this. I'm going to copy it by hitting control C, click on my network 2 and hit control V to paste it. Now this will actually operate the exact same way as the last circuit that we did, but it separates it out a little bit and gives us a little more functionality. Depending on who programmed it, how advanced the circuit is, this is a pretty common practice to just simplify how the output is going to be turned on. So the output is typically one will be turned on by one internal memory bit. Okay, and now we can actually even change it up and modify the logic of this very easily by going down to network three here, grabbing a normally closed circuit, tagging this to that internal memory bit that we created. I can grab an output of here and I will just identify this with a tag that I've already created named red light or right red light. Select that, enter it in. Now these two will have the exact opposite logic. Since my memory bit, I have a normally open memory bit and a normally closed memory bit. So I'll go ahead and download this and then we can sh I will show you the operation. So now I have extracted the ladder program in here to expand it a little bit. And what we're ready to do is we are ready to see how it operates. Now what you notice right away in network three is that the output is on. It is logically turned on. You can tell that because it's green obviously. And you can see on the TII trainer that the right red light is activated. So now when I come in to activate my latching circuit, the right red light turned off, the left red light turned on, and what we've done is we've actually set a circuit up that will be completely opposite. So for example, the right red light could be conveyor not running because it stopped, your memory bit is inactivated. 
when you hit the start button this light can indicate that the conveyor is turned on or whatever output you want to attach to it let it be a cylinder let it be a solenoid let it be a um, motor for a conveyor or a fan and that's really a couple of different ways that we can perform memory circuits here in here on the TII trainer using the TIA Siemens uh, portal program so stop button deactivates the circuit which allows your right red light to come on you hit the green button here this activates it says the circuits live all of this is mirrored perfectly on the uh, monitoring program for the uh, TII V113 and that's how a very basic latching circuit works in ladder logic programming and again there's a lot of other things that you can do here if you wanted to you could come in here and add multiple start buttons you could add multiple stop buttons all of that's done by just following basic logic and performing a parallel and different parallel and different series circuits well I hope you enjoyed the video I'm Pat Cleet for TII technical education systems and for more information or more videos check out our YouTube page hope to see you there thanks bye